It's a beautiful fall evening. The sun is setting. The dog finally stopped barking. Life is good. But inside, there's trouble brewing. And Emma has no idea. Although she feels fine, like her father, Emma is one of the 67 million adults in the US with high blood pressure or hypertension. Just like her radiator that's on the fritz, Emma's heart is working overtime to get the job done. Let's have a look. The heart is the pump in our bodies, delivering blood to the entire system through a set of pipes or blood vessels of all sizes. Smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, physical inactivity, family history, and increased age all contribute to these blood vessels, or our pipes, becoming less elastic. The more blood our heart has to pump through stiff, narrowing arteries, the higher our blood pressure. When the force of the blood against our artery walls is too high, life-threatening health problems can result. Problems like kidney disease, heart disease, stroke, even heart attack. Can Emma get her pressure down before it's too late? When your heart beats, it pumps blood round your body. As the blood moves, it pushes against the sides of the blood vessels. The strength of this pushing is your blood pressure. As your heart pumps, the flow of blood in your arteries and your blood pressure rises and falls in a regular wave pattern. Blood pressure is shown as two numbers. The top number, or systolic pressure, is the pressure when your heart beats. The bottom number, or diastolic pressure, is the pressure when your heart relaxes. Healthy blood vessels can stretch to allow for these changes in pressure. Damaged blood vessels are less stretchy, which increases blood pressure. Constant high blood pressure puts extra strain on your heart and blood vessels. Over time, this increases your risk of a heart attack or stroke. It can also cause problems for your eyes and kidneys. High blood pressure speeds up the process of atherosclerosis, where fatty streaks form inside the arteries. If one of these cracks, it can cause a blood clot in your arteries. This is what causes a heart attack or stroke. It's never too late to make changes to protect your heart. Systole and diastole. Um, systole and diastole are two terms that you'll hear about the heart. Um, sometimes uh, you can think of systole as the work of the heart. Systole is when the, the heart is squeezing the blood out to the rest of the body. And you can think of diastole as the uh, blood uh, uh, coming to the heart when it's totally relaxed and the heart's filling back up, getting ready to squeeze the blood out There's again. The reason why we continue to manifest this high degree of disease, remember when it took us away from our mother, they took us away from our breath. The food that was made for us, specifically for us, was no longer in our mouth. <laughs> sisters, <laughs> sisters, the body is made up of 102 minerals. Iron, calcium, phosphorus, carbon, and all the rest of the minerals on the planet. All this chemical that she's talking about, the body doesn't know about that. Soul Food is a movie about a big, humongous black grandmother, aptly named Big Mama. Big Mama demonstrates her love by feeding herself and her offspring enormous amounts of kid lard. Then, get this, Big Mama's arteries are so clogged, they gotta amputate her arm. It was her leg! Right, okay, whatever, leg. Then, she dies of a heart attack. <laughs> or another stroke, or something. God called her home. And what does the family do after she dies? They get together for a Sunday dinner and eat the same food that just killed Big Mom. The same food! They didn't learn a lesson. Nobody went on a diet, and that's the end of the movie. 30% of the total nutrients then actually go to the brain. To fuel the brain, feed the brain. The rest of it goes to the body. That's 70% for the body, 30% for the brain. When that happens, we distribute the nutrients throughout the cellular system. We're able to create energy, we're able to allow for cellular regeneration, healing, living, growing, 
feeling good. That's known as a satiety state. It's the opposite of hunger. If we actually give these cells non-nutritive foods, bad things happen. We actually enter into a state of chaos. Our body remains hungry for more and more nutrients that we aren't getting from those low nutrient foods. You typically know those as processed foods. Satiety state is everything. Hunger is the bad thing. So when we enter into this phase of nutrient deficiency, all sorts of negative things happen. One, we introduce chronic aging, chaos, inflammation, all sorts of negative disease, inducing the body into a state of degeneration. Healthy cells equal cellular regeneration for the body and mind. Cell damage is exposure to disease and early cellular death. That's also known as aging rapidly. It's not what we want to experience. We want to do only good things to our body. When we do good things, such as exercise and eat right, especially the essential nutrients, we have healthy cells, healthy body, healthy mind, equaling a good, happy life. The opposite is not what you want to experience. That's cellular damage, inflammation, joint pain, rapid aging, and the nasty one, chronic disease. Less blood will be flowing to your digestive system when you fast, so more blood will be sent to other tissues in your body. In addition, your body will use the fasting period to remove deposits of cholesterol that line the blood vessels. When you breathe, your body can absorb thousands of toxins which are infused in the environment around us. Fasting helps us remove the toxins that have built up within your lungs. Your stomach uses the time during fasting to clean itself and remove any waste matter to allow for more efficient digestion. Your intestines also use the time during fasting to clean themselves and remove any waste matter to allow for more efficient digestion. Your liver provides the body with glycogen, the secondary energy source, and breaks down fat to provide glycerol, another energy source. When you are fasting, your kidneys increase the amount of diuresis, the process of excretion of salt and water, which leads to lower blood pressure. Apples. Red apples, as well as green apples, play a vital role in reducing high blood pressure. Cucumber. When it comes to cucumbers, most of us just throw a few on our salad at lunch or dinner and call it good. Cucumbers are high in potassium, magnesium, and fiber, and it can help reduce high blood pressure. Ginger. Ginger is one of the herbs that has the greatest effect to lower your blood pressure when added to your diet. One of the best things about ginger is that it is a great substitute for salt, and salt is one of the worst things you can have if you have high blood pressure. Ginger can be a great alternative to salt to add flavor to your dishes. Not only that, but ginger actually has properties that will make your desire for salt decrease over time. Kale. This is a superb food for lowering high blood pressure, also known as boracol. It is one of the best vegetables. So I'm going to take my blood pressure after the first interval to show you exactly what happens to our blood pressure when we do high intensity exercise. My blood pressure is 119 over 72. My pulse is 68 right now. So let's give this a go. I'm on a stationary trainer, but it's something where I could essentially fall off because I need to balance myself. And this is really good for the feeling of riding rather than riding a stationary bike. Okay, so about 10 seconds until my first interval, I'm just gonna hit it hard and right after I'll check my blood pressure. Here we go. My blood pressure is 143 over 73 and my pulse is 119. All right, so I just finished my workout. I did a 10 minute warm up. I did 10 inter intervals, one minute each. In between each interval, where I pedaled really fast, I pedaled real slow. So it was ten, one minute on, one minute off. One minute on, one minute off, for about 20 minutes. And then I did a 10 minute cool down. I'm gonna hit 
my blood pressure. Let's see what the blood pressure is right after a workout. So now my blood pressure, you can see after about a, just a minute's rest, it's 110 over 60 and my pulse is 82. So my heart's racing, but the blood pressure normalizes. In fact, it gets uh, better after exercise. 